Okay, ready, let's go. Go? Go where? Well, let's go. Go. Go start. Start? The lesson. Let's go start. Oh, okay. We showed you that lots of signs for things are based on a part of the object they represent, like the whiskers of a cat, the top of the table, and the roof and walls of the house. Now we'll show you the signs for things that are also based on a part of the object they represent, but you'll show the part moving as you make the sign. For example, we sign flag like this and tree like this, showing them blow in the wind. We sign turtle by showing its head going in and out of its shell, and the frog by showing its croaking throat. We sign movie by showing the flickering of the film as it passes through the projector, and we sign ambulance by showing its lights moving. And of course, there are butterflies flying and candles flaming in the wind, and what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? You've interrupted the introduction to our lesson. I wouldn't say that's nothing. Hey, I was only trying to help. Well, how was this stuff supposed to help? Uh, you know, by showing everyone how the words in this lesson all relate to each other. By showing me how they move. What? By showing how they move. What? By showing how they move. You know, things moving. Trees, flags, turtles, frogs. Anyone could have made the same mistake. When you sign airplane, visualize your thumb and your pinky finger as the plane's wings and your index finger as the plane's nose as it flies through the air. These are the railroad tracks and this is the train and this is the movement of a train over the rails. Form the shape of a boat as it moves over the waves. Show the boat and the attached sail as the wind moves it forward. This represents the boat and this represents the water. The boat moves forward on the water. Show the movement of the ambulance's warning light. Show the movement of the helicopter blades as the helicopter lifts off. Form the runners of the sled as they move down the hill. Show the motion of ice skating on the two blades. Show the motion of roller skating on the wheels of the skates. Form the letter E and move it up and down your index finger to show an elevator going up and down in a building.
See the butterfly's wings flutter? The bird's beak opens and shuts. The duck's wider beak opens and shuts. The chicken's beak pecks for food on the ground. Fish swims through the water. These are the crab's claws. The turtle's head and neck moves inside and outside its shell. The frog's throat expands when it croaks. We see the snake's fangs as it slithers along the ground. The horse's ears move up and down twice. The donkey's larger ears move up and down twice. Moving the donkey's ears down once is a sign for stubborn, since donkeys are considered to be very stubborn. This represents the fast twitching of a rabbit's ears. A squirrel often makes this motion as it deals with its food. Bears are known for their claws and bear hugs, and no one wants either. Move your index finger over your nose to show the twitching nose of a mouse. Switch the index finger to the letter R and have a sign for rat. Spiders walk like this. These are the antenna of a bug moving up and down. You already learned that some signs move in the direction of their receivers or destinations, like give, push, send, and show. Drive is an interesting sign because you can sign it without any forward motion to just communicate, I drive, or I'm driving. But if I'm driving someplace in particular, I could show the car moving in a forward direction. I'm driving to the restaurant. I'm driving to the house. 
I'm driving to the ocean. If I put my destination in a particular place, then I would make my car go toward that place. The mountain is over there. I'm driving to the mountain. I'm driving up the mountain. You'll learn about the sign language concept of directionality in detail in Lesson 16, as well as more of these tidbits of information along the way.
we see the shooting light of the stars as we gaze at them at night. This is the Earth, and this is the Earth's axis. Form W's on both hands and move them around each other to represent the Earth revolving around the Sun. See the tree firmly rooted in the ground and its leaves gently swaying in the wind. A leaf sways in the wind from its stem. You already learned the sign for water. Sign water and then show the shape of the motion of the waves of the ocean. This is also the sign for sea. Sign water and then show the curving shape of a long river. Show the shape and movement of a cloud. These are the raindrops, and they're falling. These are the snowflakes gently falling from the sky. Wind currents sometimes flow in a single direction and sometimes back and forth. Show the shape and movement of a tornado. Sign water and show how it rises in a flood. Show the flames of the fire. This is also the sign for burning. The lower hand remains in place as the upper hand shows the window opening and closing. One hand remains in place as the other hand shows the door opening and closing. Show how the gears of a machine mesh and then move as the machine operates. When you watch a movie, you see the light flickering from the projector as the film passes through. This is also the sign for movie. The shower head sprays water from above.
As the cake bakes, it rises. The popcorn kernels must pop or no popcorn. Show a flag on a flagpole being blown by the wind. Show how the flame flickers from the wick on the candle. Placing the letter N on your wrist to take a patient's pulse is a sign for nurse. Placing the letter M from MD on your wrist to take the patient's pulse is a sign for doctor. You'll also see people using the letter D while making this sign. Little kids with colds often use their fingers to wipe their running noses instead of their handkerchiefs. In sign language, we often don't use separate signs to describe objects. Instead, we incorporate them into the sign as we make it. Small book, big book, big room, small room, small flag, big flag, big window, small window. You'll learn about the sign language concept of size in detail in Lesson 15, but you'll see the appropriate size incorporated into the signs of objects whenever appropriate. Look for a few examples of size among the following practice sentences.
In lesson four, you already learned the signs for man, boy, woman, and girl. In lesson five, you learned the sign for marry, and you already knew the sign for baby. If we modify or combine these signs, we get eight additional signs that will be very useful to you. Just touching your forehead with the thumb of your open hand, the first part of the sign for man, is the sign for father. Just touching your chin with the thumb of your open hand, the first part of the sign for woman, is the sign for mother. The sign for father is extended to show that the father is an extension of the grandfather. The sign for mother is extended to show that the mother is an extension of the grandmother. A modification of the signs for boy and baby became the sign for son. A modification of the signs for girl and baby became the sign for daughter. Combine the signs for man and Mary to sign husband, a man who is married. Combine the signs for woman and Mary to sign wife, a woman who is married. Many of the signs that describe our environment and the people in it look like the real characteristics. You learn the sign for road from winding to straight to narrow, and you already saw me sign a winding road, a straight road, and a narrow pathway. You also learned the sign for child by indicating a short height. If this person is short, then this person is tall. In this lesson, you'll learn many signs that look like the characteristics they represent, and many of them may be pretty obvious to you, like the sign for cold. And the sign for fat. The sign for sad. The sign for ugly. The sign for blurry. And the sign for dark. If I'm carrying something heavy, my hands might drop from the weight. If I'm carrying something light, I could easily lift it. Think of hitting a rock when you sign hard. Think of feeling 
fluffy balls of cotton when you sign soft. You can easily bend things that are flexible. I indicate that something is long by showing the length from my hand all the way up my arm. Put your index and middle fingers of both hands together to make the sign for short. Indicate that the distance is short along the tip of your fingers by moving your fingers back and forth like this. This is also the sign for soon. When you sign a short height like a child, you just indicate the height. If you want to compare the height of two people, you can do it like this. You sign the height of both a person and a thing by moving your index finger along the palm of your hand. This is tall and this is taller. A fat person usually has very full cheeks. This person is as thin as skin and bones. This quick motion is a sign for fast. This slow motion is a sign for slow. I'm so full that there's no room for one more bite of food. My stomach's empty and this is the pathway the food will take. Sign full and show a look of disgust to show you're fed up to here with the situation. People often show eagerness by rubbing their hands together. This is also the sign for enthusiastic and motivated. I put my thumb over my mouth to show it's tightly shut and will divulge no secrets. This is also the sign for private and confidential. Show someone with a big nose and that he can't keep his nose out of other people's business. The sign for calm communicates things are now quiet and have settled down. Do you see how the sign starts near the natural gesture for quiet and then looks a lot like the natural gesture for settle down?
This surface is smooth to the touch. A rough surface is not smooth and has many bumps and indentations. When a surface like a tabletop is neat, you can run your hand over its surface since it's not covered with clutter. This is also the sign for clean. A mess is just like a mixed up pile of things. This is also the sign for scramble. You can easily tell if a surface is sticky if your fingers stick to it. When things block your vision, it becomes dark. Think of your fingers as rays of light and all of these rays make it bright. This is also the sign for light and clear since things are much clearer in a bright light. When you look through all these moving obstacles, nothing looks clear. Everything looks blurry. This is also the sign for vague. Tallness and shortness are obviously related to size. You learn to sign the height of both a person and a thing by moving your index finger along the palm of your hand. So, Michael Jordan is tall, the tree is taller, and the building even taller. Not everybody and everything is tall. You can sign short by showing a minimum of upward motion. but this is a better way to show short. When you sign a short height like a child, you just indicate the height. You could compare the height of two people like this.
Think of this opening as something you can fill up, like a measuring cup with sugar or a pail with sand. To show it's full, I pull my hand over the top to wipe off the excess. I move my middle finger across the back of my hand to show there's nothing on the surface. It's empty. This is also the sign for bear. We've seen people put their hands over their coffee cups and glasses to show that they've had enough. And I don't want any more. This is the sign for enough with this added movement. Open your hands to show you have nothing inside. Gather up everything around you and lay them in the palm of your hand. This is also the sign for whole. If you don't want it all, you'll cut off some. Some for me, some for you. You can partition off some of the things in your hand for some purpose. If you have coins in your hand, you might be saying, I'll put this part in the donations canister. Move these two objects apart. This is also the sign for separate. Put your fingers inside your other hand to sign in. Put them in twice to sign inside. Take your fingers out of your other hand to sign out. Take them out twice to sign outside. One hand is above the other. One hand is below the other. This is also the sign for bottom and basic. You may see some people using the letter B to sign basic. My two hands are on the same level. They are equal. This is also the sign for fair. Shaking my head while signing equal is the sign for unequal. This is also the sign for unfair. If this is one level of performance, then this is an advanced level.
If this is one level of performance, then this indicates a lower level. I'm moving down a straight and narrow pathway that's directly in front of me. Follow a narrow winding path. This shows a narrow pathway. This width shows a wide pathway. The concept for general is shown as a pathway that broadens to include a very wide area. Something is exact when one specific point matches up precisely with another. This is also the sign for specific. One hand shows the upper limit and the other hand shows the lower limit. Anything below the top limit or maximum is less. I'm showing a large quantity for much. This is the position we'll use to compare with other positions. This is near. This hand is moved against the other. I'm moving my index finger around this object. This is also the sign for about. Pull your bent index finger from the other. This hand comes between the fingers of the other hand. This hand goes through the fingers of the other hand. This hand goes across the other hand. Laws of physics tell us that two objects can't occupy the same space. That certainly applies to signing as well. In a few of the following sentences, you'll have to manage several objects in the space in front of you so that objects don't occupy the same space. You've already applied the concept of placement when you've picked up a hot dog from the table, put bacon on a plate, and put candles on a cake. This time you'll have to deal with more specific placement of objects as we use signs that give us directions on how to use our space, like above, below, near, between, and 
across. You'll learn about the sign language concept of placement in more detail in Lesson 15, but you'll see appropriate sign placement modeled on our way. When we introduced these wrap-ups back in Lesson 1, we told you that sometimes we'll teach you signs as a preview of later lesson topics. Why? Because we don't want you to have to wait that long to learn some very useful signs. Also, these preview signs logically belong with the other signs in the wrap-up. We already did that when we taught you book in Lesson 4, along with 
magazine, word, and story. By now you may have realized that the sign for book shows parts of a whole thing that is moving. Some of the signs in this wrap-up are also previews of later lessons which we'll point out as we teach them. When we introduced these wrap-ups back in Lesson 1, we told you that sometimes we'll teach you signs as a preview of later lesson topics. Why? Because we don't want you to have to wait that long to learn some very useful signs. Also, these preview signs logically belong with the other signs in the wrap-up. We already did that when we taught you book in Lesson 4, along with magazine, word, and story. By now you may have realized that the sign for book shows parts of a whole thing that is moving. Some of the signs in this wrap-up are also previews of later lessons which we'll point out as we teach them. Kids like to make ugly faces. A distorted ugly face is the sign for ugly. Every face is beautiful by someone's standards. Highlighting the face, starting at the chin, circling the face and ending again at the chin, represents beautiful, as in a beautiful face. This is also the sign for pretty. Sign water and feel the moisture on your fingertips. Move your bent index finger across your chin to dry it. You can see sadness directly on our faces as the features on our faces drop. We can tell if a person is happy by looking at her face, but the sign for happy is based on what we don't see, the happy feelings rising in our chests. When we're cold, we shiver. This is also the sign for winter. One sign for hot is a natural gesture of fanning yourself when we feel hot. This is also the natural gesture for cool as we cool ourselves. The other very common sign for hot is based on hot food. If you put food that's too hot in your mouth, the natural reaction is to immediately remove it. Our faces show that we have tasted something sour like a lemon or a pickle or something marinated in vinegar. Point to your chin and turn it sideways as you make a sour expression on your face for sour. Sign sour using the letter L to sign lemon. Sign sour using the letter V to sign vinegar.
candy is sweet since it has lots of sugar. So licking candy became the sign for sweet. Modifying sweet, we can sign candy and sugar. It's also the sign for cute. This gesture is added to a verb or adverb to indicate a higher degree. Cold, colder. Dry, drier. Adding this gesture indicates the highest degree. Cold, colder, coldest. Dry, drier, driest. We already showed you signs for lots of things that are based on a part of the object they represent, like the eyes of the owl, the sides of a box, and the lapels of a coat. We also showed you that sometimes the part of the whole thing is moving, like the gears of the machine, the water through the shower head, and the wings of the butterfly. And now we want to show you signs for things that include you because you do something with the thing, like make a hamburger patty to sign hamburger, or unlock a door by using a key. Or pull your blanket all the way up to your neck to sign blanket. Or lick an ice cream cone to sign ice cream. Okay, that's all. We're done. Let's get started. Bye. Whoa! What's your hurry? I was checking my script just before we started, and did you know that half of the words we're teaching in this lesson are foods, which means that I'm going to be pouring syrup over pancakes, licking ice cream cones, and eating strawberries. So let's go. Bye. Bye. Put the baking pan into the oven to bake. This is also the sign for bake. Think of the back of your hand as a loaf of bread and you're slicing it with a knife. The reason why you don't slice it this way is because it looks like the sign for saw or wood. When you make a pancake, you flip it over and cook the other side. Think of this as a container with a pouring spout and pour the syrup onto your pancakes. This is also the sign for other things you pour, like dressing on a salad and sauce on spaghetti. Form the shape of the tomato with one hand and slice it with the index finger of your other hand. You begin your slicing at your lips because that's the sign for red. Show how you lift the spaghetti as you serve it. You toss salad. Cut a wedge of pie.
Dip your tea bag into your cup several times to make a cup of tea. First, crack the egg on the rim of a bowl, then see how the shell divides into two parts. Make a hamburger patty. This sign is based on how cheese is prepared as the whey is pressed through the cheesecloth. You make cookies by first cutting them out using a cookie cutter. If we go to the source, we would get our milk by milking a cow. People often thump a melon to see if it's ripe. Form the letter P to do the thumping and you've got the sign for pumpkin. Sign water and then melon. You'll also see watermelon sign like this. Use two fingers to represent a knife as you spread some butter on your bread. Form the letter J and apply jelly just like you spread butter on your bread. First sign yellow, then put on mustard, almost like we're painting it on. First sign red and then pour out the ketchup. I'm eating corn on the cob. Visualize yourself licking an ice cream cone. When we chew gum, our cheek often moves up and down. Think of your fist as the potato. Make a curve V with your other hand, really a fork, and stick the fork into the potato. Eat soup from your bowl using a spoon. This is also the sign for spoon. Bring a strawberry up to your mouth and eat it all but the stem. Put the orange up to your mouth and squeeze the juice into your mouth.
form the letter B, then wipe the foam from the head of the beer from the corner of your mouth. People sometimes open a peanut or a pistachio nut with their teeth. After too much beer and too many nuts, you may need to take an aspirin. Pop a pill into your mouth. This sign shows you are using a knife. Put the fork into the food. Wipe your face with your napkin. On and off are obviously words that describe placement and directionality. However, you usually don't use a separate sign for on and off. Most of the time it's incorporated into the action like turn off the faucet or turn on the TV or take off your belt or put on your hat or pull off your t-shirt. Other times, on and off are obvious in the actions you're signing, like take a hot dog off the table, write on a box, put the cat on the floor. Still, other times, on and off are just not necessary in signed phrases, like on Saturday and on time. Up and down and in and out also are often part of the action, like pick up a plate of bacon, Put down a suitcase, drink up your milk, take out the food, and pour in some gas. When any of these words are not a part of another sign, then you sign them as in, the keys are in the drawer. My cat is up a tree. The elevator is going down. The best rule to follow is to visualize what you want to communicate and let that guide the signs you select. Remember that later when you practice the signs in the practice sentences.
This is the motion of someone pedaling a bicycle. The hand shape, the letter S, represents shoes. Rev up the motorcycle using the controls on the handlebars. Form a gas tank opening and a nozzle, then put the nozzle into the opening. When you ski, you'll use poles for movement and control. You wear a hat on your head. Put on gloves. Fasten a belt. When you have a cold, you use a handkerchief to wipe your nose. This is also the sign for having a cold. Women carry their purses by the handle or over their shoulders. We carry a suitcase by the handle, but it's usually heavy. Imagine your hand is a door. Create a key from your index finger and turn it to lock the door. Lay down money in the palm of your hand. Think of your hand as an envelope. Pretend to lick your middle and index fingers as you would a stamp and stick it to the appropriate place on the envelope. Think of your hand as an envelope. Pretend to lick your thumb as you would a stamp and stick it in the appropriate place on the envelope. This is a page in a book and you turn the pages using the letter D. Some people might think this is the sign for sleep. Remember, this is the sign for sleep. This is a sign for bed, as in, are you ready for bed? Add room to bed and you've got Bedroom. Form the thickness of a pillow beneath your tilted head. On a cold night, we pull our blankets right up under our chins.
Grab the handles of a drawer and pull it out. Form a mirror with one of your hands and move it slightly as you admire yourself in it. This is also another sign for the word appear, since a mirror reflects what things appear to be. A slight modification of the sign makes it seem. Rub some of the soap onto your hand to use it. As you blow up the balloon, its shape becomes apparent. You learn the sign for give. Gift is a variation of the sign for give and is like holding on to a small box and giving it to someone. Shape your hand into a blossom and smell it on each side of your nose. If a bee stings you, your first reaction will be to swat it away. Get ready for some more sentences with on and off, in and out, and up and down. As you practice comprehending and expressing the vocabulary from this lesson, remember, think visually.
get back to nature. In lesson seven, you learned the signs for tree and leaf swaying in the wind, showing the things you're signing as they move. In this lesson, you learned to sign flower by showing what we do with a flower. Smell it. In this wrap up, you'll learn signs for a few more natural materials we want to show you based on what we do to them. I'm laying in the grass. This is the ground and these are the blades of grass and my chin is resting on the ground with the blades of grass surrounding it. Grass. Rub the land between your fingers like a farmer or a gardener might. This is also the sign for ground and soil and property. You already learned the sign for hard, which is like striking a stone to show how hard it is. This is very similar to the signs for stone and rock. Imagine your hand is a piece of wood that you're sawing. Wood. Using a hammer is a sign for hammer. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. It's time for a cultural moment all over this land. Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open the door and see all the people. This well-known children's activity should put you in the right frame of mind for this lesson. Think of these as people. These are many people from head to toe. These are two people from head to toe. This is just one person from head to toe. Head to toe, head to toe, head to toe. I can almost hear you saying enough of the head to toe already. Well, we need to emphasize that this is a person from head to toe because you'll learn in the next lesson that you can represent people in other ways too. Daniel, give them a preview. Sure. This is a person from head to toe and we use this for signs involving the whole body like appear, disappear, and escape. This is a person from the waist to the feet and we can use this for signs focusing on the legs like stand, jump, and dance. This is just the head of a person which we use for signs like yes and revolution. We'll tell you why in the next lesson. And these are just the feet of a person which we use for signs like walk and kick. We'll also show you how to use this hand shape to represent a person which you'll do with both hands to show the relative position between two people like behind, ahead, and far. In this lesson you'll also see that you can use your fingers to represent animals and things as well as people. My dog disappeared. Which dessert should I choose? There are so many photographs in the album. You'll see in the next lesson that you can also use the A hand shape to represent things as well as people. The turtle is behind the hair. Avoid fried foods. India is far away. You know, we just cover the things they need to know for the next lesson too. No problem. I'll let you do the review in the next introduction while I watch TV. Now I think I'll take a little nap instead. So let me get this right. You want me to be on camera, alone, by myself, without you? Well, now that I think about it, how about you watch TV and I'll do the next introduction myself. 
she's back. The index finger is commonly used to represent a person from head to toe. When I move my index finger in a very small circular motion, it's a sign for someone. If my index finger represents me, then I'm all alone moving around within this very small area in front of me. This person moves down along the side of your mouth to relate a sad expression with a lonely person. I disappear. I appear. I escape. Two index fingers represent two people. Here they meet. These two people are linked to show their friendship has linked their lives together. Moving your index fingers away from you in a rolling motion like this, or in a fluid motion like this, are both a sign for go. Bringing your index fingers back towards you in a rolling motion like this, or in a fluid motion like this, are both the signs for come. I can form the letter V on both hands and make the motion to show people coming and going, signing visit. I can form the letter H on both hands and speed their running action and then I'm signing hurry. If I succeed, you could say I've climbed the ladder of success. This is also the sign for achieve. You can depend on someone who doesn't let you down. This is also the sign for rely. If you can't depend on someone, that person can't hold you up. When you should do something, someone might have to hold you down until you accomplish your tasks. This is also the sign for should, need to, and have to.
enemies pull away from each other. This is also the sign for opposite. When two people divorce, they go their separate ways. We use D's to represent the two people. You can use all the fingers of both hands to represent many people. Two people can meet, but lots of people come together for a meeting or a conference. See how all these people are interacting with each other? This is also a sign for integrate. Use the letter A to sign associate. This is also the sign for each other and associating with each other. Can you picture many people just pacing back and forth, waiting? Your fingers represent the many people sitting in the audience. See how they fill the seats as they rise from the front row all the way to the back. When people are pressed against each other, that's crowded. The players at the line of scrimmage battle each other in the game of football. In battle, the advantage may shift from one army to another. Attack, counterattack, in the sign for war. All of these people are marching in unison. This is also a sign for parade. These four people are carrying the casket in a funeral. Or you may want to consider these as the headlights of the cars in the procession. We often have to wait in line, like at a movie theater. After the people at the previous show leave, we can file in. Lots of signs have more than one meaning, just like words in spoken languages do. When you see these signs, you'll need to use the context of the conversation or the situation to clarify the sign's meaning. You've been doing this all along with pronouns. I know this is she because I already referred to Jane. I know this is he because I already referred to my brother. You've also used context to distinguish between history and Thursday a bright sun from a clear sky, and a female police officer from a male police officer. So you've got the skills to determine when this sign means someone or something. Which you'll need to do in a few of the following practice sentences.
Someone is very popular when people hurry to be near her. Or maybe she just owes them money or something. We gently caress someone's ego when we flatter him. This is a person and he's getting picked on. This is also the sign for henpecked. This person just got punched. This person is being captured. Picture a person in front of you that you're trying to convince with strong encouragement. You can really strongly encourage someone to your way of thinking that way. A person is surrounded by her environment. The letter E indicates the surrounding environment. A person is also surrounded by his culture or the culture of others. The letter C indicated the surrounding culture. We all find ourselves in different situations. The letter S indicates the situation surrounding a person. The index finger commonly represents a person, but it can also represent a thing. When I move my index finger in a very small circular motion, it can be the sign for something. Number one emphasizes that this person or thing is the only one. This is also another sign for the word just. We show how this person or thing is special by picking it out from all the others. This is also the sign for accept. I can't make up my mind about which person or thing to choose, this one or this one. I really don't want to have to choose. I'd rather take both. Since I've decided which one I want, I choose this one. This and this are exactly alike. Yes, they are the same. This is also one of the signs for like. A little variation gives us a sign for as. Let's lay these two over each other and examine them. Nope, they're definitely not the same. 
pull them apart so we can clearly know they're different. You learn this sign for boy. Two boys who have the same parents are brothers. You'll often see movements of this sign abbreviated like this, brother. You learn the sign for girl. Two girls that have the same parents are sisters. You'll all see the movements of this sign abbreviated like this. How many are there? One, two, three, four. That's a few. When the speed of this sign is faster, it's the sign for several. Many fingers equals many people or things. Move your index finger in and out through the fingers of your other hand, showing that you're moving among them. If you let all the people or things come inside, they're including them. They were inside, but now they're missing. This is also the sign for gone. When we come between people while they're doing something, we're interrupting them. This is also the sign for interfere. When we teach you the vocabulary words for each lesson, we also tell you other common meanings for the sign. However, we can't include every possible meaning for a sign or our explanations would turn into a thesaurus. So, from time to time, we'll tell you other words that apply to a sign we've already taught. This time, we want you to know that the sign for the same is also the sign for like and as. It's bright. It's bright as the sun. It's bright the same as the sun. It's bright as the sun. We also want you to know that the sign for only is also the sign for just, as in only a minute, just a minute. In lesson 17, you'll learn the sign for recently, which is also the sign for just, as in I recently arrived. I just arrived. Once again, you have to depend upon the context of the conversation or the situation to understand the right meaning and use the right sign.
you just learned that this and this can be the same or different. In this wrap-up, we'll show you a few more signs related to the concepts of same and different. This is the sign for same. Showing more than two things that are the same, like this, is the sign for also. Also is also the sign for two. This sign is based on the sign for different. When someone says, but, you expect a difference of opinion. This hand shape allows me to point in two directions. Use this hand shape to show that two objects are the same or that two people are thinking alike. I can extend the use of this hand shape to show that many things are the same or that a group of people are thinking alike. This is also the sign for common to show people and things with something in common. A suit has a jacket and pants of the same material, and I show it by using the sign for same. I just don't know how long I can keep up this brutal pace. Come on, Don, it's time for our cultural moment. I said, come on, Don. Oh, you know, we talked it over and decided you don't need either of us for this introduction. Just go right on to the vocabulary section. If you decide you need the explanation from Lesson 10 again... Just go back to Lesson 10 and view it again. Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open the door and see all the people. This well-known children's activity should put you in the right frame of mind for this lesson. Think of these as people. These are many people from head to toe. These are two people from head to toe. This is just one person from head to toe. Head to toe, head to toe, head to toe. I can almost hear you saying enough of the head to toe already. Well, we need to emphasize that. This is a person from head to toe because you'll learn in the next lesson that you can represent people in other ways too. Daniel, give them a preview. Sure. This is a person from head to toe and we use this for signs involving the whole body like appear, disappear, and escape. This is a person from the waist to the feet and we can use this for signs focusing on the legs like stand, jump, and dance. This is just the head of a person which we use for signs like yes and revolution. We'll tell you why in the next lesson. And these are just the feet of a person which we use for signs like walk and kick. We'll also show you how to use this hand shape to represent a person which you'll do with both hands to show the relative position between two people like behind, ahead, and far. In this lesson, you'll also see that you can use your fingers to represent animals and things as well as people. My dog disappeared. Which dessert should I choose? There are so many photographs in the album. You'll see in the next lesson that you can also use the A hand shape to represent things as well as people. The turtle is behind the hair. Avoid fried foods. India is far away. You know, 
We just cover the things they need to know for the next lesson, too. No problem. I'll let you do the review in the next introduction while I watch TV. Now I think I'll take a little nap instead. So, let me get this right. You want me to be on camera, alone, by myself, without you? Well, now that I think about it, how about you watch TV and I'll do the next introduction myself. She's back. This person is standing. This person is dancing. This person is jumping. Picture a person falling down and sliding as the sign for fail. This person is kneeling. This person is falling down. This person is lying down. This person is getting up. This person is sitting on a chair. Doing the movement two times is a sign for chair. If people are in a sitting position, they can sit in a circle. This is the generic sign to mean a group of people, but you'll often see people making this sign using the letter G. Use the letter F to sign family. Use an A for association. Use an S for society. Use an O for organization. A person who joins is included and is now inside. This is also the sign for participate. When a person quits, he must withdraw and is now outside. A person is here, but when she transfers, she's now there. A person who is traveling goes all around.
While traveling, it may be more comfortable to ride in a vehicle like a car. When we arrive at our destination, we get out of our vehicle. Use your hand to represent a horse. Some people enjoy riding on a horse. The flat hands are used to represent a person's feet. This person is walking. None of us are always coordinated and graceful. Sometimes we're awkward when we walk. The sign for awkward is a slight modification of the flat hands to better show awkward. You learn the sign for shoe when you learn the sign for bicycle, which is pedaling with your feet in shoes. The sign for shoes shows two shoes side by side. A foot is kicking an object. Doing this movement two times is a sign for soccer. This time we want you to know that the sign for can is also the sign for able. I can swim. I'm able to swim. We also want you to know that the sign for gather is also the sign for collect and for earn. I gathered money. I collected money. I earned money. We also want to teach you some signs for cities that we didn't have enough time to do back in Lesson 6 when we taught you Chicago. Boston and Baltimore are signed with the letter B like this for Boston and this for Baltimore. Sign Atlanta with an A like this. Sign Philadelphia with a P. Sign Detroit with a D. This certainly doesn't cover all the signs for all the cities, but it's a start. You'll definitely want to ask someone what the signs are for cities that are of interest to you.
The fist is commonly used to represent a person's head. Nodding up and down indicates yes and is also the sign for nodding. We show yes I can by making a strong nod with both hands in unison. Can. This is also the sign for able. If I don't know if I can, I show that my nod is rather weak and both hands are never in unison. Protesters often show their dissatisfaction by turning their heads away from authority. This is also the sign for revolution and strike. In major wars throughout history, someone who was defeated was often forced to bow his head in the presence of the victors. This is also the sign for conquer. If the spirit of an enemy was not yet broken, the victor might have to physically force his enemy's head into a bowed position. The A is commonly used to represent a person or a thing. Someone or something is with the other. This is also the sign for together. In this case, someone or something is behind the other. Someone or something is avoiding the other by hanging back. Someone or something is following the other. Someone or something is chasing the other. Someone or something is passing the other. Someone or something is ahead of the other. Someone or something is far ahead of the other. Two people are confronting each other. They are challenging each other. Doing this movement two times is the sign for game. Here's one person and here's another person. Can you visualize them running after each other?
One person is competing with the other. This is also the sign for campaign. Set yourself up on a solid foundation for everyone to see in the sign for establish. You are lending a helping hand to someone by raising her up. Sign secret, then show someone hiding under some covering. You learn that the A is commonly used to represent a person or a thing. When I repeatedly run my thumb over the A like this, I'm indicating each person or thing. I can also use this movement to indicate each person or thing in a group. You learn the sign for with. The opposite sign is without. Get ready for some more sentences with Can and Abel. And all the other vocabulary we've taught you for this lesson.
In this lesson, we showed you that your fist can represent a person's head as it does when you sign yes, protest, and defeat. We also showed you this A hand shape to represent people in signs like with, compete, and help. Now we want to show you some signs that have slightly different hand shapes to represent the head and the body. Use this Y hand shape to represent a person's head and nod it up and down to indicate, ah yes, I see. You've learned the sign for strong. If you're weak, you barely have the strength to keep standing. Use this A hand shape to represent a person. Think of a person back there who refuses to step forward, but instead stays back, indicating he or she refuses to be involved. Change the hand shape to a fist and make the sign with more intensity to sign won't. This sign is based on the sign for help. Form two S's the first letter of support, and push up one S with the other to show how one hand is supporting the other. Create a curved entranceway with one hand and enter it with your other hand. This is also the sign for into. Let the fingers of your hand represent one person or many people exiting out of this curved entranceway. This is the sign you use to represent that vehicle, which can be moving, in a line with other cars, and parked. Before you even began to learn sign language, you already knew this as the letter V, the sign for victory and the sign for peace. You quickly learned that the letter V had all the same meanings in sign language and more, including a person from the waist down and two eyes seeing. Which we showed you back in Lesson 5 along with hear and taste, as well as the other senses. In this lesson, you'll learn how to sign other words dealing with sight using the letter V to represent two eyes seeing, like look and read, with this representing a page of text. You'll also use V's on both hands to represent two pairs of eyes seeing, like in the signs for watch and supervise. These two sets of eyes show that the seeing is more intense whether we're showing one person or a couple of people watching and supervising. But when the number of people doing the watching becomes a group, we show this by using all of our fingers as many eyes seeing. You'll also learn several signs which use only the index finger to represent both eyes seeing, like in the sign for notice, with your eye, really both eyes, attending to something, or this sign for investigate, showing your eyes 
looking over something more than once. Well, that's basically it for the V. But don't put those fingers away yet. Now think of those fingers as words that you'll use in all manners of talking. Like talking with lots of words continuously coming out of your mouth or talking in a two-way conversation with words which come from you and go to you. Or like announcing with your words covering a large area or commanding with your words coming out of your mouth and being directed to someone with force. So for most signs related to seeing, Think of the letter V as the movement of your eyes. And for most signs related to talking, think of your fingers as words. And you'll quickly learn to recognize and use these words in this lesson. And remember them longer. Move the V's from your eyes for the sign look. When we observe something, our eyes are directed toward it and study it. Two sets of eyes looking hard and directly at something is the sign for watch. Here are eyes looking around. Two sets of eyes looking at an area over and over is a sign for supervise. Time is a continuum with the past behind us. Take your eyes and look back in time. When I predict, I am looking into the future. Think of your hand as a page of text and use your eyes to read down the page. We look at the lips to lip read. If I notice something, my eye is directed toward it. When we investigate something, your eye is directed toward it and you look at the information several times. This is also the sign for inspect. The letter R is your eyes and your hand is a page of text. Investigate the page several times, as you might do doing research. Think of your hand as a page of text. Use the R to go back over or review the text. When we study, our eyes pour over the page.
Think of your hand as a page of text. It sometimes requires looking at the content from several viewpoints to gain the meaning. Take something that would be seen through a camera and put it on paper. This is also the sign for picture. When we wake up, our eyes slowly open. When we're surprised, our eyes open abruptly and wide. When we become shocked, our eyes open huge and our bodies become immobile. I'm using my hand to direct my eyes across a large area as I search for something. We actually use the letter C because this sign originated in France from the word Cherche. In the sign for picture, this C is the picture. If it looks strange to you, you might turn it sideways to make sense of it. If what you're reading is complex, it's like the lines of text are just big, wavy, unintelligible lines in front of you. When we attend to something, our eyes are directed only to it as if we have blinders on. This is also the sign for attention and concentrate. When we focus on something, our eyes begin by looking within a large area but narrow down to focus on a particular object. I am fascinated by something and my eyes are drawn to it. When I ignore something, my eyes are diverted away from it. You just learned in the previous lesson that this is the sign for a vehicle which can move. It can move past another vehicle, it can park, or it can just sit in a line of traffic. As you practice the following sentences, you'll encounter a few that include vehicles. View them as scenes rather than sentences as you try to comprehend and express them.
you learn this as the sign for hearing person. Let your index finger represent the words rolling out of your mouth. This is also the sign for speak. Your index finger represents words coming out of your mouth and going directly to another person. Trace your throat upward with the letter V twice to indicate your voice. A person may carry on a one-way conversation by using lots and lots of words represented by most of the fingers on your hand. He keeps going and going and going and going and going and going and going. When we have a two-way conversation, words come from me and to me. This is also the sign for conversation. Use the letter C to sign communicate. Can you picture mouths opening and closing as people gossip with each other? Your two index fingers are directed toward the other person. This shows your answer is coming from you and directed to the questioner. Use the letter R to sign respond, reply, and report. The words come out of your mouth and are directed to cover a large area. It might help you to remember this sign for general while signing announce. These words come out of the mouth and are directed upward and out. Upward because the words of a famous person are thought of as more important than the regular folk. Some major noise from your mouth comes shooting forward. This is also the sign for SCREAM! We can see and usually hear a person complaining, but the sign is based on what we can't see, the angry feelings being pushed out. This is also the sign for object. Think of an officer barking out an order. The words come out of her mouth and are directed with force. This is also the sign for command. In the sign for thank you, words are politely offered to someone else. Thank you. When you make a suggestion, you offer it for others for consideration. Picture the words of your suggestion in your hands as you present it. This is also the sign for recommend, and nominate. You could say that I'm taking a vow when I make a promise.
If you offer your words as proof, you must put them out there where everyone can examine them. This is also the sign for prove. Doing this movement twice is evidence. Think of the back of your hand as a table and your fingers as words that are going across the table to someone who is receiving your advice. This is also the sign for counsel. Spread the advice you're offering to sign influence and effect. When you discuss a topic, you lay your words on the same table. This is also the sign for discussion and debate. Two people who are furiously directing words at each other are quarreling. This is also the sign for argue. Snap the mouth shut. Nothing new to report. Go for it.
Here are some more signs based on people talking, with words coming out of their mouths. We've been a little creative with a couple of these explanations, which is why we saved them for the wrap-up. We included the signs for write and for name here, even though they don't show words moving. And if we're going to include wrong here, then we've got to include right. And FYI, it's different than the direction right. Picture yourself holding words between your thumbs and index fingers that you must continuously pull forward to form an explanation. This is also the sign for describe and define. Words that are true come straight forward from a straight talker. This is also the sign for many forms of the verb to be. Am, is, and are. This is also the sign for sure and really? Words that will not come straight forward are not true. They're false. Even though your index finger is brushing against your nose and not your mouth, it still represents false words. This is also the sign for fake and artificial. When the words are not the straight truth, the lie they form moves sideways instead of straight ahead, just under your mouth. All the fingers of your hand represent the words that make up your lie. Think of this sign as an emphatic pointing towards someone when she's right. Point the index fingers of both hands, placing one over the other for right. Think of this hand shape as a long piece of tape covering your mouth, reminding you to keep your mouth shut when what you're about to say is wrong. You'll actually place your hand just below your mouth as you're signing wrong. This is also the sign for mistake. This sign is based on a time when an uneducated person would sign his name with just an X. Make the movement twice for name and once for named, as in we named our baby Sophia. The sign for interpret is based on the sign for change. Picture yourself holding a word with your thumbs and index fingers that you change from one language into another.